You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you guys for joining us today. We appreciate it very much. Hope you're having a great day. We know that you have a lot of options of what to spend your time on, and you are spending a few minutes here today. And guys, we also know that this show is nothing without you and your questions. So please go to askdroneu.com and let us know what's on your mind, because as we've said a million times before, okay, maybe not a million, but a lot. If you're thinking it, so are a lot of other people. So askdroneu.com, let us know. We need to hear from you because, uh, yeah, you guys are what keeps this thing going. And we have too much fun for it to not keep going. Couldn't agree more with that, Rob. I really have a lot of fun and I'm grateful for you, frankly. Uh, grateful Ditto. for everyone who watches the show, but grateful for you. So we got an interesting question today that actually took a, a lot of thought and a lot of calc uh, calculations. Um, sorry, I just wanted to do the old like um, that was great. the old Bush impersonation. Be like, I was calculizing. <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, but no, it's I really interesting it. because we got this question that essentially, it, with before I play the question or before we play the question, it essentially is asking, what is the largest area of a farm that I can technically map? while being inside of the regulations. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very good question because he's like, well, I've got to stay line of sight, right? So how are these companies advertising, mapping thousands of acres and doing all this and blah, 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 blah. It's a great question, but uh, you got to remember that this is aviation. So there's always pilot responsibility. And this is something that a lot of people do not understand that are trying to get into the aviation world. At least that's what we learned from Vic's story in Denver. Yeah, so. you know, it's not like any other, I mean, it's just like any other technology. I mean, you can drive a Lamborghini that can go 180 miles an hour. You're still gonna go 75 on the interstate. That's true. I mean, you're supposed to. That's the point. So 82. the resources and 82. tools will, uh, that's <laughs> another calculation of sorts. <laughs> that actually is a very deep thought calculation, but I'm not going into that. I have no doubts. Anyways, the point is that the resources and tools available to us absolutely allow us to go outside of the confines of what's legally allowed. But let's figure out how we can do it legally. I love this question. Uh, anyway, this question is uh, brought to you by the Drone U community. If you'd like access to over 30 classes from getting your part 107 to actually learning how to operate a drone and scaling a business, well, if you need a business class, we've got 30 hours of that. If you need a drone class specific to operating your drone and getting smooth motions out of it. Well, we've got a class called the Don't Crash Course. And depending on which drone you fly, there probably is a course for that. Or maybe you're in the FPV community and you want to learn exactly how to build an FPV racer. Well, we got a course on that. Maybe you want to learn exactly how to do photogrammetry. Well, we got a course on that. Maybe you want to learn how to do a cell phone tower mapping. we got a course on that. I, <laughs> I can really keep going. But for $47 a month, you get access to it all. And if you're like me, you know the power of a community and you know the power of staying motivated and inspired. So if you're not a part of the Drone U community, you definitely want to be want to become a part of that. Just go to droneu.education. Hi guys, I am the IT manager for a farm and I'm an amateur drone pilot, but I do not have my part 107 yet. However, I've been tasked by the owners of the farm to seek out some kind of drone solution to, to fly over the fields, you know, check on the crops, that kind of thing. Doing some research, uh, you know, I come across things like the SenseFly EB series of fixed wing uh, drones. And I'm just wondering, how do these things work legally? Because, you know, they're, they're autonomous. So there is no pilot in command. And they are designed to, you know, fly over hundreds of acres and come back and land themselves, which means they're they're obviously going to go beyond visual line of sight. So, is there any way to legally use these things, or are they just marketed that way, and it's up to you to stay within the regulations? Anyway, thanks for the show. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs> Love you too, Lee. They hear the question, and uh, right off the bat, there's always a pilot in command, right? Somehow, some way, technically, there is a pilot in command, yeah. even if they don't know it. 
It's There's un- somebody. unfortunate that he didn't get that in his research because FAA is really clear about that, whether it's autonomous or not. That was an argument that a lot of pilots were using pre-107 to quote-unquote fly drones uh, for money. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you know that argument has been around for a very, very, very long time. But look, he, he's got a really good point, Rob. For sure. This is a huge problem in our industry. It's a huge problem in a lot of industries. It's like... Feature, 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 tout, 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 does this, does that. We don't actually explain how it does it or the workflow or how intense that is, but it is possible because as soon as you learn the workflow that's involved, chances are you don't want to buy that product. Like that is that is probably the case for 90% of the high-end drones. I'm talking the drones over five grand or more for a frame. Um, it's it's gosh, it's even common with DJI. It's one of those things that just really, really uh, just gets to me. Now, for those people in the world that are experienced and they have lots of wisdom and intelligence, they're very aware of this problem. But for whatever reason, it seems to permeate deeply within corporations and companies. Um, But that being said, he asked a great question, right, Rob? I mean, it's, uh, hey, I want to inspect. I want to do this. I want to do that. Can I really actually like do this? Yeah, absolutely, which is great because we need more people thinking in these terms. I'm so glad you brought that up. It's just really actually his line of thought, as as frustrated as some listeners may be, you nailed it on the head, Rob. Mm-hmm. The fact that he's asking this question and he's doing this, we need more of this. This is phenomenal. This is why we're here. We are trying to aid people who are new to do the right thing. Voila, drone you. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much. And uh, we did a few calculations. Yes, we did do some calculating here um, <laughs> on the <laughs> calculator. Uh, uh, you know, that, that thing there that does the uh, numbers, uh, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a really old calculator. Uh, so <laughs> actually, if you had ever watched Rob operate a calculator, <laughs> holy cow. Like people say uh, when they watch me on a keyboard, they're like, uh, do you even know what you're writing? And it's like, it's kind of just intuitive at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, like I can actually can type faster than I can dictate things, which is scary. But watching you on a calculator. That's funny. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> so when you get into public accounting all those many years ago, it's one of the first things that you learn is how to use technically a tin key. And they would literally, as you get started, put numbers in front of you and you would just practice because we used them so much that you just look at numbers on like a, say a phone book or something, and then you get really good at it. The really good people would do, like if I'm right-handed, which I am, you'd get good at doing it with your left hand, which I never really did. So do you, have you guys ever seen the meme of like the octopus with eight arms going click, 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 <laughs> That's pretty much what Rob looks like, but with just his right hand. So uh, I have never seen if people only. articulate their fingers like as widely and precisely <laughs> as he does it. So oh, there's yeah. something to good be said times. for that. Good times. And if he took with those finger skills to the sticks, he'd be one of the best drone pilots <laughs> in the world. But we're not going down that rabbit hole. So. No, not today. But um, we are excited to talk about the calculations that we were doing. So if here's how I thought about this, right? Uh, He talks about line of sight. Can he fly hundreds of acres um, in a day with one flight? Well, that's an extremely valid question. How much of an area can you actually fly legally at one point in time with one person? So here's what I did. I took line of sight. If you got 20-20 vision, can typically see about half mile away. Is that documented anywhere in in what we're when I researched a... that a long time ago, it was like everywhere. Okay. But I, I can cool. just do a quick Google search, 2020 vision. I should have asked you this before we went on air. But... Furthest distance seen. You should Google how far can the eye see with okay, 2020 you keep vision. Going. You keep going. Okay. <laughs> now that being said, I looked at it. I took this number because I have read about this before. Um, knowing that the human eye can see uh, about half a mile, I would say is right as I've tested this myself with the Mm -hmm. telemetry on a drone. Okay. So, you know, it's, you think about, okay, if I can fly out about half a mile, then the only way that I can maintain visual line of sight is if I'm within a half mile radius of my position. Okay. So I'm just going very broad numbers here. Okay. I'm really trying to simplify the formula bill. So (laughs) (laughs) I didn't look at the topo before I did this. Okay. (laughs) All right. Anyway, hold on. So what is the largest area that you can legally fly? Well, I'm not a lawyer. 
I'm not trying to give you legal advice, but when I did the calculation, if you take half a mile, that's 2,640 feet. I typically tell people not past 2,500, but that's just a very simplistic way of doing 5,280 divided by two quickly. And, and by the way, important, just rounding up. And sorry. An important variable in this is how big is your bird, right? No, I don't think that's an important variable. You don't think so at all? all? Like if you're flying a spark versus maybe an how EB? big the battery is. Uh, I mean, because I'm really trying to say, like, he he asked the question of, let's say I'm flying uh, the EB, right? The EB right. is a very large drone. Right. It's got a, a glide ratio that's. 10 times better than any multi-rotor. Think glide ratio, right? If I lose power, how much area can I cover before hitting the ground? Right. Glide ratio of a drone is maybe like 30 feet. Yeah. Okay, like maybe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whereas the glide ratio or glide path of a fixed wing drone is gonna be significantly higher. Okay, so fixed wing drone, half mile, which is technically 2,640 feet. Well, how do we figure out the square or the, um, uh, what is, gosh, why am I struggling with vocabulary this morning? What is the area of a circle? That's pi r squared. So area of a circle equals pi r squared. So our radius is 2,640 feet. If we take the square root of that and then multiply it by 3.14, we get about 21,884,544. If we then divide that by the square feet of an acre, which is 43,560, we get to the approximate number of 502.4 acres that you could legally cover uh, in one day. So, hmm. all right. So I think I answered that. Yeah, I think so. And then so the follow-up question that we were talking about is how does multiple VOs help with this? And well, now we're still kind of figuring out. You know, this got, well, it was actually a very good question because, again, as Bill has been talking about, uh, so Bill English, the Bill I keep mentioning, uh, you know, just got his E Echo Victor Lima October his EVLOS waiver. He keeps calling it an EVLOS because it's like a daisy chained uh, VO, which I think is actually the right term to call it and that he uh, appropriately coined it. So it's not really a BVLOS because it's not really beyond your visual line of sight. So if you could have multiple daisy uh, chained VOs and let's say you had two and each one, and I don't know the provisions of Bill's waiver, so do not take this as this is what he would do. This is so hypothetical speculative like this is probably not what he would do let's just, <laughs> let's just err on the safe side of what bill would do he probably would not do this okay yeah, but let's say that he had a uh, a visual observer half mile away and then another one a half mile away and i don't even know if he can have multiple vo's so i'm really like in fantasy land now but let's say that he could do that at what is the largest area that he could literally fly and we're, we're sitting right around 1,000 acres, so... <laughs> well, that's just based on two VOs, though, that's right? That's just based on two VOs in three circles negating the negative space, so... <laughs> so there would need to be regs on how many VOs you can string together. Yeah, I'm sure it says in his waiver what he can do. But, um, but I mean... That's it, true. It does bring up a really good question because, you know, some of these... Um, some of these farm jobs are really outside of what people can do. I know there are almost 40 beyond visual line of sight waivers, uh, and I haven't really looked at all 40 of them, but I would say maybe a quarter or half are the EV LOS kind of waivers. So I would say, yeah, you know, we've talked before, Rob, about how important getting to a system with the FAA for systematic means of approving BVLOS is really going to open the door to this industry. I mean, yeah. we're already, you know, on the first level, maybe the second, but that that and flight over people is just going to be gangbusters for this industry. Well, and this in particular, because it seems easy for me to say, but relatively simple. I mean, we've got Lance out there for them to be able to say, okay, you want to fly here? Yeah, there's very little traffic. Don't go above 200 feet or whatever. Go for it. It seems simple to me, but I don't know. I guess we're just kind of chipping away to get to some of these even simple solutions for, for situations like this. I wonder if the Department of Transportation has a map that showcases um, traffic load in like every street in America. Probably not, but maybe like the highways. But then you could well, take I'm talking like... Uh, air traffic, though. Oh, uh, well, you know who does have that data is... Uh, Flight radar. 
Well, and it's not only, it wouldn't only, yeah, I'm sure it does, but it wouldn't only be air traffic. It would be air traffic at what altitude? Because if the air traffic, even if it's significant, is at 20,000 feet, well, then why not give BVLOS to the farmer so they can go use these resources? Yeah, and then again, you get into, gosh, the, the amount of issues I just see, like, see with that because it's so micro-focused, you know? Mm. I don't know. There's... Yeah, no, I, I'm not the problem I'm solver. I'm oversimplifying it. I understand that. I totally understand that. And I'm sure the right people that are smart are working on it. You know, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I also would like to ask the question of how dangerous really are drones? How much damage can they really cause? How many accidents have there been since we've been flying drones? There's been one, literally one accident that was significant hitting another aircraft. So, um, and, and one is too many, make no mistake, right? But true, I, yeah, no, I mean, it's a valid question, it's a, it's a valid question. I think probably some more testing needs to be done to really be able to answer that question, no, for sure. But this is also why I say thank you so much to the Virginia Tech Science Department because since they didn't have good pilots, they couldn't get good data on crashing drones into people, so their, their force multipliers are a little bit lower than maybe the uh, the uh, professional pilots would be. <laughs> So anyway, um, it's so funny because every time I say that, my dad is like, don't you talk crap about the Hokies? Because he's such a <laughs> huge Hokie football fan. No so, bias in that statement. Yeah, none at all. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right, well, that's going to do it for us today. I mean, I think we answered the question. You know, he really, his question was really about, you know, can I fly fixed wing drones, these huge distances that, that is being advertised? Am I really able to do these things? And the answer is, well, it depends. Because first of all, if you're flying within the rules of part 107, which unfortunately I do not see this farm operation being under section 349 at all. So I would say that this is a part 107 operation. Uh, if he were to maintain visual line of sight, what does visual line of sight mean scientifically? Okay, if he were to maintain visual line of sight in a perfect radius around him and map inside of that, what is the largest area that he could map? Now, you know, if this drone is doing 20 meters per second or 10 meters per second, uh, it could take all day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, 500 acres, that's a lot to map. So, also, uh, we didn't even talk about, you know, he wants to get information on the crops. Multispectral cameras. It's not going to be just a regular camera, all right? Mm -hmm. We're not getting into that today, though. Really do appreciate this question. If you have a question, would love to hear it. Go to askdroneu.com as we, we love your questions. And also, if, uh, if you're a member, well, think about becoming one. Uh, if you want to support the show, one way to do it. But that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.